Welcome, welcome to Men's Right Cooking, my uh, Men's uh, Right Movement uh, channel that I, or playlist actually I've started. If, if it grows enough and you guys want me to just put out content over this, that's fine. I generally put out content uh, about men's right issues, you know, fairly infrequently. Let me know in the comments below if you'd like me to kind of uh, do more about this in uh, more in the future. My my chat, this playlist is called Men's Right Cooking uh, based upon the amazing thought that I haven't seen anywhere on the Internet. It's rare to be able to come up with a, a theory that no one else has come up with uh, on the Internet. And what it was was that suddenly when I found myself having to take care of, of a bunch of children in the home and cooking again, I was initially completely overwhelmed. I didn't know how I would do it. I really had believed the blue pill lies that, you know, taking care of a home and everything costs, takes 60 hours a week. <clears throat> and come to find out, as you would expect in many things, that's a lie. It doesn't take 60 hours a week. And come to find out, cooking is not hard. It's monotonous. You have to do it every year. I mean, do it every day. Um, but uh, keeping house is not there. So I made up this playlist called Men's Right Cooking to let men who come after me know, you can do this, man. You can do it. You know what? You can, you can work full time. You can work 50, 60 hours a week. Yeah, that takes some Saturday time. Plus, you can put in 20 hours, 30 hours in your house, and your house will be immaculate. My house is not perfect, but it's not bad. And, um, and you can do that. And um, so don't be afraid. That's the reason that this channel is called Men's Right Cooking. Don't be afraid. We conquered the globe. OK, you can conquer, you know, house chores. Uh, anyway, th the reason I'm making this video today is I want to go over a very uh, something that's very powerful that to me that I have figured out. And I haven't seen a lot of other uh, MGTOW or men's right groups or channels, other channels actually talk about. And I wanted to discuss it. And it's what is the reason? What is the meaning of MGTOW or I guess MGTOW mostly uh, in, in, a, in a more general term, the men's right movement? Uh, in, in larger. And I believe this also will explain to us why feminists attack the MGTOW and the men's right movement constantly and why they get so annoyed about it. This is, if you understand what MGTOW means at its core to many men like me who were, you know, recently red pilled, then you'll figure out why they hate it so much. For me, the whole concept of MGTOW is actually best expressed, I think, on MGTOW.com. And it says that men have to understand that we have self-ownership. Those are some big words. That's what it says, is that self-ownership. Men have self-ownership of themselves. Men should have self-ownership of their resources. We owe no one our resources. You know, we owe our families that we live with. And, our, and if you have a partner and you live with them, yes, you have maybe an agreement to share your resources with them while you're with them. But once you guys decide to separate, you owe no one your resources. There's an argument to be made for child support. Okay, that's a different argument than alimony. In the current setup that no longer works for men, men are enslaved. They, their self is taken legally by the family court law. They state that under the current system, men owe their ex-partner something uh, in the form of alimony or, or property, community property. If you built it together, that can be argued. But we're basically talking about alimony here and the concept that if you, if you force, if I legally take something that is yours, if I legally take um, in, in your future earnings, it's a form of enslavement. It's absolutely true as a form of enslavement. And uh, some people call it you know, family court rape it, with the concept that rape is, is physically taking control of someone and through violence or the threat of violence taking from them something they didn't want to give. So if you have your resources taken from you, okay, then that is a form of rape. That's why they refer to rape. So that concept under MGTOW.com is, to me, an extraordinarily powerful concept, which is self-ownership. We should owe own ourselves as men. And until we can figure that out, how to do that, then the risk of entering into a, per the risk into entering into a permanent relationship with a woman in your personal space. Most people think these guys are, everyone is like oh, afraid of women or don't want to do these people. Every, everyone I know who is in the MGTOW kind of movement in the, in the men's right movement, all have mothers, all have sisters. Many of them have, they work, they almost all of them work with women in the workplace, but what they do is actively exclude of women from their personal space. And that's their choice. That's absolutely 100% your choice. But that concept of self-ownership, that's a big word. And sometimes I wonder if we do enough to, to explain what that is. And what that 
really started to, what I began to understand that MGTOW means is that I am complete within myself. That is, uh, you know, the way I would interpret self-ownership. I and you, you are complete within yourself. You, I'm a religious person, so I do the God pill, not the black pill. You know, if you're a religious person, you understand. You need a relationship with God as a Christian God that will help you through the dark times in your life, and that's okay. But you are complete within yourself. You need nothing from anyone else except your relationship with God other than those who you choose to put into your private space. And almost all of those, you can successfully run your life by having a good and healthy relationship with God, a Christian God, and then also including nearly one, nearly, you know, you're never perfect, but nearly 100% of the people in your personal life are men or family. You know, sometimes I need a little touch of this, a little touch, you know, that's what sisters are for. They call up, they come over, they, they help you out and they leave. And they generally don't mean to you, you know, they don't do that. But to trust another uh, person in, in this kind of environment is suspect. That is a very powerful thought because all my life, and I'm sure all your life, all your life, you have been told that, you know what, um, you need to be successful, you need to go to, you need to finish high school, go to college, get a good paying job, and and get married, have a house, get a mortgage, go into debt, get a little white picket fence, get however many kids she wants to give you, have sex how often she wants to give it to you, you know, have your house decorated the way she wants to. So when you come home, you look around your own house and you go, this is nothing like I would even, this is not, if I was single, my house would not look like this. That's what you can say. This does not make me at all happy. It's not a bachelor pad. The concept is This is a woman's house. It's someone else's house that I'm paying 100% for. Oh, by the way, and I want to do this, this, and this. And when you give them this, this, and this, then they go, oh, my goodness, you work too much. And you're like, well, I need to do this for you. You said you want this. Anyway, we've been told since we've been a child that to be successful, we have to essentially have a relationship with the opposite sex. And the powerful message of MGTOW is that is a lie. And I'm going to tell you guys something, which I know you are seeing. I can feel it like in social circles, in, uh, in bars, in uh, clubs, fewer and fewer men actually walk up to you and go, hey, are you married? You know, how's the family life? They talk to you about, you know, like, how's your job? You know, are you doing okay? Are you healthy? Hitting the gym? You know, I mean, it's suddenly it's turned from, I remember when I was, you know, decades ago, people would all be, well, you need to get married. You need to get married. You know, you need to have stability in your life. You know, getting married is better for men. And now men are going, mm, nah. I'm not encouraged you to do that, bro. If you do it, I mean, some, most guys are like, yeah, okay, that's cool. But I don't see almost any men encouraging them to get into permanent relationships. Think about this. You can, let's say common law is not a thing, although we all know common law is dangerous in a thing. But let's say common law is not a thing. And let's say you are smart. You have a girlfriend for five years, but you never let her move in permanent with you. She always has to maintain her own apartment. She never can set up, you know, have that whole process where, hey, I live here and you can't kick me out because you let me live here for free. And after five years, you go, we're going our separate ways. We're done. This relationship doesn't work. If you don't have common law impact and if you were smart enough never to let her move in, what do you owe her? Nothing. You give her her stuff that she brought over and she's out. Done. So, but somehow let's, again, we're going to exclude child support Um, for the 15th time. We're excluding child support because that's a whole nother issue, but I believe that needs to be resolved in a different way. But let's say that you're married for five years and it it doesn't matter. Let's say you had a long distance marriage. You know, maybe she did have her own apartment. You lived on one coast. She lived on the other. You guys flew back and forth, tried to make it work. As typical, you'll know what's going to happen here. You absolutely know what happens in long distance relationship. They never work. Never. Okay. Well, Never to say never, but in a huge amount of times, long distance relationships do not work. So anyway, you're both married. You both maintain your own place. You get divorced. And suddenly she says she, you owe her 50% of your retirement fund. That's the key of when MGTOW.com says, we believe in self-ownership for men. Why is it so different? Even the women out there who don't ever get married got to go look at the women who did get married and say, what? what why is it that different? If I'm, staying, if I'm staying with this guy, the same type of guy for five years, and when our relationship ends, I get a big fat nothing. Why, if I get married, why if you get married, you get, you get the right to claim all of these other resources? And so men have finally figured that out. We woke up and go, wait, you're right. 
And since women have said that, you know, their sexual behavior cannot be, any sexual behavior is basically accepted. Any sexual behavior has to be viewed as good. Any sexual behavior is whatever. Oh, okay. All right. Well, if that's true, then what is it? Then if that's true, then okay. Child out of wedlock, no longer bad. How many, how long they ride the carousel? No longer bad. Okay. Then why can I just be another guy on the carousel? Powerful, powerful, powerful myself. And that to me is the core of MGTOW. And the reason they hate MGTOW is because I'm not the only guy you're talking to. You guys who came before us and you guys who cut this icing, you guys who are men's right movement and MIG, and, and MGTOW, I personally think it's in kind of one genre of thing, although I really do respect that MGTOW are like, I always, the way I describe MGTOW and men's right movement is the men's right movement is the Malcolm X, I'm sorry, the Martin Luther King of men's civil rights and the MGTOW are Martin, Mar, uh, Malcolm X. They don't give a damn, they're out of here, they're like, no, we're not negotiating. We're not talking. We're going to end society as we know it. We're at least going to end what you think is the right society in my own personal space. We're done. That's, 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 <laughs> so that's how, that's how I say it. It's like, you know, men's right movement, more like Martin Luther King. They want to engage, change civil laws, change the laws, kind of reform everything. And I, I would put myself more on a men's right activist. I do believe that there's some activity that they do. They're the ones that explain the facts that, you know, 80% um, of divorces are started by, by women, but eight, 80, uh, men are eight times more likely to kill themselves in divorces. It's disgusting. I mean, I, whoever, who is telling you that men are so much more likely to kill themselves while going through a divorce? It's disgusting. Uh, that something like men lose the rights to see their children 80% of the time, it's disgusting. This is just evil. So the men's right moon out there, MGTOW is going, it's all dangerous. So this is the main purpose. And remember, the MGTOW, you got, we're not talking to each other. We're putting out content to talk to these women's husbands, these women's girlfriends, these women's sons. That's why they hate you. They hate you because they're like, wait a minute, if my son realized or my boyfriend realized or my husband realized that he doesn't have a really good deal and I can legally rape him anytime I want, anytime I want under the current law, I can make claims against him that he would have to prove a negative, which is, as almost every person who knows how to think, nearly impossible, nearly impossible to prove a negative. And that's why they hate it, because you're not talking to each other. We're not just talking to guys. You guys come along and we're going, hey, have you, have you thought of this? And that's why they can't take it. They cannot allow this to happen. They cannot allow it to continue. And that is my, that is my belief of what MGTOW basically means and why women hate it. So anyway, tune in. Please leave me comments below. I've got some merch. I don't have any MGTOW merch. I do a lot of uh, uh, partisan conservative political stuff. So if you want to hook up a brother, you know, throw buy a couple of T-shirts on the uh, represent.com. Um, you know, the T-shirts a little bit more. I think they, they sent me like three bucks uh, per profit. That's not their stuff. And so, um, you know, send me and that's a cost, a toll cost shipped to your door. So if you get, you know, you give me four bucks and or three dollars or whatever it is, and then you get a cool kind of T-shirt. So throw some stuff that there. I also have a page on Subscribestar that's growing. I would like to thank everyone on Subscribestar who is uh, who's who's helping out the, the, the channel. Uh, Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, Viva Crystal Ray, either Virgin Guadalupe.